Everyone has their own ideas on how to end poverty. Justenia Rico, an aspiring filmmaker, has some of her own. If we were to play a little word association game right now, and I was to say the word feminism, every single person in this room would probably think something a little bit different. Maybe you would think women's rights or equality, but the reality is most likely you may think man-hater or annoying or that one female blogger who dissects and condemns every movie you've ever loved mm -hmm. as sexist and evil. But these negative thoughts that you may be having actually pertain to the word's connotation or the idea or feeling that a word invokes in addition to or in opposition to its literal meaning. This is the literal meaning of feminism. The advocacy for the social, political, and economic equality of the genders. Remember that the connotation of this word, which is a result of the actions of a few, are not the intention of the majority. Just keep that in mind as we continue. My name is Jesenia Rigo, and today I am here to talk to you all about a woman's worth. Feminism as an anti-poverty strategy in the bates of the Dominican Republic. I could give you a myriad of reasons for why I chose this topic, but if I'm honest with myself, they are the reason. The girls and women of the bates. This year, I had the opportunity to once again join Barrington Christian Academy's missions trip down to the Dominican Republic in conjunction with the Good Samaritan Hospital to serve in the Bates. Now, for those of you who do not know what Bates are, they are small, extremely impoverished villages where sugarcane workers and their families reside. Only, these workers are not here by choice. No, most often these men and women are originally from Haiti where the promise of a good paying job and a better life told by recruiters of sugarcane companies is eagerly believed. Only when they arrive to the Bates, they are stripped of their identification papers and greeted only by a largely undrinkable water supply, little or no electricity, and houses often no larger than the average American master bathroom. And what they thought might be a good paying job actually turns out to be 16 hour work days without substantial breaks and a salary that rarely consists of more than a dollar a day. This is the reality that so many people face as 20,000 new Haitian men and women are brought over to the Dominican Republic to work for the sugarcane companies each year, either recruited through deception or literal abduction. The Good Samaritan Hospital and Barrington Christian Academy recognize these injustices, which is why they organize an annual mission trip to distribute medicine, clothing, school supplies, and spiritual education, all tasks of which I had a part in helping out with this year on my trip. During this time, I observed that relationships between younger boys and girls often lacked respect and contained an air of animosity, sometimes even culminating to the point of violence. Among adolescents and adults, I quickly became aware that interactions between genders almost always consisted of men shouting vulgar sexual innuendos at women who were doing nothing more than passing by them on the road. But these common occurrences, these culturally ingrained forms of discrimination, do not come as a surprise. After all, even though the Bates are somewhat isolated from the rest of the Dominican Republic, values from the surrounding country are still assimilated by the Bates through the authoritative figures within them, who are, in fact, Dominican. But just how is sexism present in the DR? That is one of the questions I set out to answer in my research paper. What you see here is one of the many things I encountered during my study called the Global Gender Gap Report, compiled by the World Economic Forum. This report exposes the nature of unemployment and wage gaps as it pertains to gender. 
In 2011, it was estimated that 9.9% of all men in the Dominican Republic were unemployed, as opposed to 25.3% women. And perhaps contrary to popular belief, this is not because of a lack of qualification on the women's part. In fact, women make up 62.2% of all university enrollment in the Dominican Republic, which means that despite being better educated and therefore more qualified, they still are struggling to find jobs in a market that predominantly consists of men. If women are fortunate enough to receive a place of employment, however, they still face a significant disparity in salary, acquiring an average of 16% less than men for the exact same work. And after a long day on the job, it is unlikely that women will escape the reach of persecution as it is present in domestic situations as well. Now, domestic violence is an issue everywhere. But in many countries, there are legislative and judicial systems in place to combat domestic violence. However, in the Dominican Republic, families are rarely left with a solution. In fact, out of the 8,316 domestic violence cases reported to the capital city of Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo, in 2009 alone, there were only 17 convictions. That's a 0.2% success rate, hardly passing in my book. So, you've heard the numbers and you're aware of the discrimination that female citizens face, but there is very little statistical evidence as to what undocumented women living in the Bates face. So this year I decided to create a documentary that allows these women to share their experiences on film. The following are a few excerpts from the footage that I got in the DR. scarcely 16 years old and already the mother of a year and a half old child. Due to her pregnancy, Clarice was never able to finish her education and as a result it is unlikely that her or her son will ever see a life outside of the boxes. But she is not the only one. So that first testimony you saw in that video was from a girl named Clarice, and as I stated before, her story is not unique. I talked with many other girls who all agreed that the average age of that a girl starts to have children is around 14 or 15 years old, and that if you started to have children after the age of 18, people would assume that there is something physically wrong with you. That, ladies and gentlemen, what we call a societal expectation. Girls are expected to get pregnant, regardless of whether or not that means that they finish their education or consequently are able to get a job and leave the bates. It is because of this expectation that women, 
over 50% of the population are not able to fully contribute to the economy. And it is also why I have outlined here that the persecution of these women is not only detrimental to their self-perceived inherent value, but also to the economic prosperity of an entire nation. As you can see, this issue is complex and multifaceted, which is why it is imperative that its solution be just as versatile and comprehensive in order to be effective. So what are some solutions? Well, the Good Samaritan Hospital is in the process of creating new opportunities for children in the Bates to achieve, to achieve secondary and tertiary level educations, despite their undocumented status. These organizations, called the Sugar Cane Kids and the University Scholarship Program, are mostly funded by private donors, so there's a way for you to get involved as well. However, this opportunity is irrelevant if a girl has to drop out of school due to her pregnancy. This is where healthcare becomes a priority. Unfortunately, all Haitians in the Dominican Republic are forbidden from receiving any type of public health care under any circumstance, even in a state of extreme emergency, which is why private health care organizations like Pro Familia and Health on Wheels are of such great value. These organizations do not only provide young women and men with contraceptives and HIV preventative medications, but also with sex education and family planning classes where they may learn that abstinence is the best option until the couple is more financially stable. But both of these solutions are reliant on a bigger contingency, cultural change. Nothing will change until the image and value of women is changed in people's minds and in their hearts. And as I think about changes of the heart, I am also reminded of my own spiritual journey through these past few months which I have found two verses that I think exemplify some of the themes that I have explored throughout this talk. The first being Galatians 3, 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, there is neither man nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Then I wondered what being one in Christ Jesus really meant when I stumbled across my second verse. 1 Corinthians 12, 25. So that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. This same care, this unity in Christ, is what I believe is at the very core of feminism. So next time you hear the word feminism, don't think man-hater or women trying to be better than men. Think solutions. A solution to help the women and men of the Dominican Republic work in solidarity towards the destruction of the system that has held them captive for so long. A solution that you too can be a 